Hiya folks, welcome to our Halloween Woo. premiere which we're doing today folks for you. We're going to be giving away this actual Kasori Turbo Blaze 6 litre air fryer folks to someone in the live chat there. So it could be you. It could yes, be you. Yes. If you want a chance of winning yeah. this and also see some of our little haunted Halloween stories we're going to be telling you, keep tuned and keep watching right till the end because we're going to be asking a question in a minute. And at the end, we're going to be picking the winner out of this live chat here. Right, well, we was a little bit unsure of what to do today because uh, I did plan on going out with Lee Van Camp, Sharon, didn't oh, I? Oh, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, he's not well at the moment, but he does feature in this video because I recorded some stuff a while ago and um, you'll be seeing that in a very short while. Now, the stories we're going to be telling you in this video are all true stories, okay? And what we're also going to try and do, we're going to go out, hopefully, and find somewhere, which we've looked at and we've done a bit of research in and around where we live, and there is an old airfield road in Meveringham, which is supposed to have a, a ghost of a woman that um, stops and talks or gets in the car with you even. We're gonna, she don't want to. She don't want to get in the car today, no, but we don't know if anything's going to happen. It's well documented, this. So we're going to take a drive down there a bit later on. I've got a little ghost meter somewhere, Sharon, and I, yeah. over here. Wait there, Sharon, let me get it. It's not actually a ghost meter, it's what you call in the EMF meter, and it registers um, activity. That's it there. You've got to be careful because if you move it about like that, you can make all the lights flash. But you, they never show you that on these uh, these programs you watch. But you've got to keep it steady in your hand and move around, basically. Now, if I go up to my hub and all the lights will light up, you know, your, your internet hub. So I won't be doing that. And also, I'll be staying away from uh, mobile phones. Where's your phone, Shay? You got it on you? Sometimes it can go off with a mobile phone. I don't know whether it's going to do it here or not, folks, but no, we're okay there. So there you go, that's not giving off anything at the moment. But as I say, if you do shake them, you can get it to move. So we won't be doing that. Keeping I'll it, just be shaking. Keeping it steady. <laughs> that's the idea, keeping it steady. But we will have our phones on the uh, aeroplane mode or whatever. So that's the tool we're going to be going down this little airfield with tonight. We're going to ask you the question now for the, the chance to win this air fryer. In fact, let me just stand that up there, shall I? Will it stand up there? Yeah, we'll keep that up there for that. Just so you can see, you won't touch that with the table, will you? No. So right, a question to win this air fryer, folks. We're gonna ask you a question now. It won't be the first person to answer will win. Don't worry about that. I'll be picking further down the this video. I'll say a number. Let's say, for example, 25. The, the number 25 or 30 or 40. And at the end of the video, when we check down and see who's the 30th or the 40th person to comment and leave the right answer, don't forget, you're only allowed to answer one folk, once, folks. Uh, if we see any double answers, we'll only count that as one. So don't go putting in uh, multiple answers. One answer only, that is it. That's all we need, basically. It's not going to be a hard question. And also, when we see that person, the only way we're going to know is by putting that in the chat box, at the top of the chat box, uh, announce the winner, because we'll be in the chat live. And the reason why we have to do it this way is that every time we do a competition, you get spam bots come into the comment section and promise people that they've won and they want your text number and all that. It's, it's all a con, basically. It's nothing to do with us. So this is the first way we've got, because we've got no way of knowing who's going to answer the question correctly at the number we say, unless you're in that live chat box. So the question is, Sharon, mm, we have all we all know the film The Adams Family or even the TV programme. What was the name of the mother in the film The Adams Family? Oh, no. You can't say a word, Sharon. So, right, throughout this video now, just put in your answer. We want just her first name, the mother in the film The Adams Family or the TV program. Love that show. So that's all we want you to do. And towards the end of this video, we're going to shout out a number and then we'll count down the comment section. And whoever's on that number with the right answer, that will be the winner of this Brand new Kasori air fryer. Good luck, everybody. UK UK only, I'm afraid, because we can't ship it abroad. No. So it's UK only, and um, that's the way we've got to do it. Anyway, let's get started with this video. Here's a few spooky stories that uh, we've experienced, and let's see what you think of these. And plus, we'll see you a bit later on when me and Sharon will be going out, and we'll be doing a little Thanks, bit, Lee, for little, being ill. little bit of our investigation. See you in a minute, folks. I was heavily pregnant, actually, with Emily, and I was sat in the kitchen just chatting to my friend, and we both heard a sound, 
and we looked over at the um, bin. I had one of those bins where um, you press the button and it goes zoop, and the bin went zoop. No one there. No one there. So that was a bit freaky. But we had a few things happen in that house. This is our old house, not the house we're in now. I'd not long had baby James and he was upstairs in bed. He, he must have been about three months old because he was still in our room. And my friends kept going on at me saying, come on, come out and have a meal with us. You've not been out since you've had James. So I said, fine. So I went. Um, we had our meal. And then I noticed that I had a missed call from Benj. So I phoned him back and I said, oh, what's up? He said, well, when are you coming home? I said, well, we've had our meal now. We're just going to have a drink and then I'll probably be home after that. Everything all right? Um, not really. What do you mean? The kids all right? Yeah, they're all fine. He said something really strange has happened. Right, do you want me to come home now? No, 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 you're fine. You carry on, carry on. Right, OK. So um, I had a drink and then thought, I need to go home, find out what's going on. Got home and I said, what's happened? He said, well, I feel a bit silly telling you this. I said, why? What, what happened? Yeah, it's just, it's the blue lights are on. One, two, again. one blue no light's on and one's flashing. Oh, oh my god, the battery's... Gets home not long after, and um, at the time we was decorating our bathroom upstairs. So there was like a set of ladders at the top of the stairs. So Ben said he went up to check on the children, um, and he got to the top of the stairs, he said he didn't turn the light on obviously because they were all sleeping. Got to the top of the stairs, kicked the ladders by accident. He said and then in his ear he heard, shh, you're awake. And I said, I said, what did you do? He said, I ran out of the house, ran to the garden and found you. I said, what about the children? He said, no, I just ran out. He said, I was just didn't know what to do. So that was quite strange too. I saw a ghost, white figure. Is that good enough? Now you're taking the piss now. <laughs> Get on with it now, please. I'm not, it's you. Get on with it. <laughs> right, going back a few years now, when we bought a house in North London, one morning I came down the stairs, I said to Carol, do you want a cup of tea? And she was still asleep. So as I was going down the stairs, I could hear these kids' voices. So I thought, that's strange. I shouted out, Carol, is it you? Do you want a cup of tea? No answer. So anyway, about three months later, we was talking to the neighbours, and they said, did you know that your house used to be a prep school? I was giggling on the stairs, like little voices of kids, and later on they said that used to be a prep school. So it was ghosts, kids, yeah. it was the kids' ghost. What's this knocking that you get? What knocking? In the morning. I just hear it about up past six in the morning. Where? In my house, all of a sudden, that the, I wake up and I hear uh, on the door. I go down there, there's no one there. On your front door? Yeah. That's spooky. No one at all. I look all the way around. There's Have no. You got your doorbell on? Yeah, I've got everything, but I just hear the. Have you checked your doorbell at the time to see what's there? Yeah, I've checked everything. I've looked all around. I look, every, every time it happens, I get straight up, I'm there, and it's always around about half past six. And how often does this happen? At least three times a week. Still going on? Always, yeah, always going on now. But also, I used to hear lots of footsteps in the loft. And um, you go up there and there's nothing up there. Nothing at all. But you can hear the footsteps. They're walking around the house. You're just walking around. And, and I've had mice up there in, in, the, in the loft. But this part is a bit I made for, for Claudia. It's, it's like... But, and you can hear people, it's like literally footsteps. And sometimes it's really loud. Why don't you set up a camera or something? Well, I've got a camera out there. No, I've yeah, got, you I don't mean... pay the credit for the camera. Oh. Yeah, I've just paid it. Oh. Yeah, I've, I've paid it. Well, I've what about got... in your house? Why don't you just set your tripod up one night? Well, it's, it's, the noise is coming from outside. It's like someone knocking at the door. No, but I wonder about And it wakes me, it sort of, it does, well, I'm awake. And then all of a sudden it's, and I'm thinking I'm dreaming, but I'm not, because I'm awake. And I'm awake. And that's 
And they do say never open the door to it because you'll let it in. Well, I do open the door. No, I do open the door because, well, you got it, I can't. See, I haven't, got, I haven't got any glass on my door. So I have to open it to see. Who, you got if, people? No, I ain't got people either. Got no, it's all one big solid door. Right, folks, we are now on location. We're down at the old Meverenham airfield, which basically is a cut through road now. And uh, you don't get much traffic down here at all. But uh, you've got a little bit of history about this. It's apparently a 19-year-old girl. What was her name, Sharon? Catherine Bystock. She died when her boyfriend crashed their motorbike on their way home from a dance in 1945. So she's been seen a few times. And what normally happens? Drives are said to be flagged down by a young warm woman wearing a loose-fitting RAF jacket that belonged to her boyfriend who begs them to help her lovers. Some drivers who see her have said she disappears soon as she reaches the car. Other stories go as far as she climbs into the passenger seat before disappearing into thin air. Why am I here? And also there's a smell of lavender which quickly turns into the smell of... Rotting flesh. Rotting flesh, apparently. Now, a few people are supposed to have seen her. A few people have said that it's just a made-up story to keep people away from the land. We don't know. It's very, very dark here. And um, we've not drove down the road yet. And she's supposed to mostly appear between 9.30 and 10 o'clock at night. So it's just coming up to 9.30 here, folks. We're going to take a drive down there. Now, we can't actually see anything behind you because the, the light in our eyes, it just means all we can see is the bright light. So. We're going to drive down. Back in the we're, car. we're going to drive down here first, folks. And then, I'm not walking. Hey, eh? I'm not walking. We, we might do, shall we? No, we'll have to play it no. by ear, baby. No. Let's get in the car and we'll no. drive down here slowly, folks. Okay. Right. I'm going to do my window up, people, and I'm going to put the lock on the doors. I've locked my door already. <laughs> right. So. I hope you appreciate this, people. Yeah, we're going to take a slow drive happy. down here. Now, folks. As I say, this is a disused airfield road, and it is used by through traffic making little cuts. It, it's not a very long road. Thank God for that. But we used to come down here with Jimmy when he had a little mini moto many years ago because it's not really used. There's no street lights. It was an old runway, this folks. So we're going to drive down here once, and then we'll come back the other way. And maybe get the um, the meter out. So just keeping a look here. Both sides. I don't know if I smell something there. No. I might have smelled something. Keep it going forward, baby. There's no lights down this road at all, folks. And it's, as I say, it's not really a road. There's no houses down here or anything. It's literally an old... There's a memorial there, isn't it, I think? Oh, yeah, what's that for? The RAF. We'll have a look at that on the way back. Yeah, I didn't notice that before, Sharon. We used to live in a house in Brixton, which... I was a little child then, and we left there when I was about 10 years old, I suppose. But loads of things used to happen there before um, we left the house. It was a three-storey house, and we lived in the bottom part of the house. Then there was a middle flat, which my mum and dad used to let out, and the top flat also they used to let out. My nan later moved on into that top flat, but it was a free, big three-storey house with a cellar. And um, many a time they'd let the house out, the middle flat and the top flat, and. Um, uh, many a time the, the tenants had left the house screaming and didn't want to come back in because of things that are happening. Uh, a couple of things that happened with uh, some good friends of theirs that lived in the middle flat was that they would go to bed one night and um, the middle bedroom, everything was on the one level sort of thing. You got the first set of stairs and then you had, um, you had a, a front bedroom there, you had a toilet and then you had another bedroom and then you got a living room at the front. And in the back room that looked over the garden, they used to have a gas fire. I, called it, I think they called it the kitchen. That was the kitchen area. And at the end of the night, obviously, turn the gas fire off, turn all the lights off, go to bed, regularly wake up in the morning and the gas fire would be back on. And then obviously he'd have a go at his wife saying, you left that on. She says, no, I definitely turned it off. That happened on many, many different occasions. One time when my nan lived in the top flat, again, this is stuff I remember as a kid, 
Uh, my granddad was staying with her because they was uh, separated, but he stayed with her one day. He'd come round of a weekend and visit. And she had one of those big star clocks. It's got a round centre with a clock face and a big like metal, I think they call them sunburst clocks. And uh, this was back in the 1970s, obviously. And he's sitting in the, in the rocking chair in the corner sort of thing and uh, just watching telly. Next thing you know is that clock's flown off the wall one way and the batteries have gone another way. And he just sat there watching it sort of thing. You couldn't believe that happened. This was at a time that my dad also used to work on night shift and my mum was in the obviously in the bottom part of the house, the bottom flat, and her brother come round to visit, Uncle Dave. And us three kids were in bed. And as they're sitting in the like the, the, the kitchen come living room, they had a big fireplace in the corner with uh, like a big mantelpiece on the top, and it had a fire one of those metal fire guards around it. And they're just sitting in there talking, just having a chat. And on the shelf was a bottle of salad cream. And as they were talking, just out the corner of their eye, they noticed that the bottle of salad cream was standing on the shelf, on the like the mantelpiece shelf. And they just see movement there. And they both look round at it. And the bottle of salad cream went up in the air, come out like that, and went down and sat down on the fire guard that was sitting there. And they both looked at each other and said, did you see that? Obviously they both saw it sort of thing. And uh, yeah, that was another thing that happened. Are we coming to the end of it? I think so. Yeah, where are we? I can't. Yeah, it says look, former RAF Maverick on that sign there. Yeah, can, oh. I don't think you see that sign, shall can they? Just go a bit forward to it. We'll go along. There's that sign there, can you see that folks? Let's just zoom in on it. There we go, look. Former RF Meverinham. Oh, there's a car coming behind oh, us. Oh, shut up. Oh, fit the life. Oh, no, let me reverse <laughs> you. Oh my God. Let's pull along here, I don't know where we're. In fact, let me spin around. Right, so we've let him go past. Let's just go up to this, um, this part of the road. This, this is all part of that. Little cut off, you see. So we go down here and just have a look. This leads onto the main road, you see, which I gather is all part of it. Yeah, this is still part of it, Sharon, isn't it? Yeah. So it could be down anywhere, any part of this. I thought it was more this end, to be honest with you, the way we're heading. The Meverinham end. Right, we're coming to the end of this bit now, where we'll probably turn round. That here, innit? Yeah, it's the main road there in front yeah, of us. Yeah, that's the main road in front of us, folks, so we're going to just spin around here. you don't pop out behind us or something, you know. Right, oh, no, someone's just hit something there. Yeah, here we go. Here we go, folks, we're back going down there now. All right, we're on our way back. I used to work in the Mall in Woodall Spa um, and that was, we had a, like a most haunted almost team come in and they mentioned a spirit in the cellar which was, they said, a Roman soldier that was guarding the tunnels because it's got a series of tunnels that go underground. Right, so we're actually down the village now where the story uh, Tracy's just told you and uh, this is the actual pub you used to work in, so you used to manage it at one Trace, stage. Yeah. Years and years and years ago there was also a big... Um, hotel. Yeah, right here. Yeah, if you look yeah. at old pictures of Woodall, there's a massive hotel which yeah, is now the car park. Yeah, they used to have dancers in there. Here's a big ballroom, um, but the cellar's just. Um, you can see there's two black doors open. There. Them two bars. See them doors over there. That leads down to the cellar. That's where the beer goes down, isn't it? Down there. Yeah, that's the actual tap room. That is. But it, in there, if you go along, there's a, a door called the black hole. We used to call it. So it's right. Dark. 
and the tunnels. Where's that about? About here, I would say. What, in the cellar? Yeah. Right. And the tunnel, it's a, just a two, uh, what are they called? A thingy of tunnels, and it goes all the way down to the, um, the roundabout. There's a mini roundabout, which is probably about 150 yards down there, folks, where that green, where that sign is. I don't know if you can see that sign down there, the roundabout sign, there you go. And there's a tunnel, which apparently links all the way down to this pub. And I, I, I gather, Sharon, Tracy, that down at the roundabout, it shoots off up the road where Jubilee Park is. Yeah, uh, well, that's the Roman soldier I told you about. That was what he was guarding, apparently. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, even under here, folks, there's so much history in Woodall Spa, but I've never seen them tunnels. Have you actually had that door open? Yeah, it's awful. I've been in there, Have but you? only not far, because I got scared and left. True stories, folks. It's very scary in there. Very yeah. scary. Yeah. Horrible. And it feels horrible down in that area as well. Ooh, spooky. Um, and they said he's not a very nice character and he doesn't want anyone near them. And one day I was getting ice out of the ice machine from the room adjacent to that. And as I was putting the ice in the bucket, something just poked me in my back. So I literally threw the bucket, ran upstairs, no one else in there. And there was another incident. We was having a big summer barbecue. So we had a big delivery of bread rolls. So we put them all in the tap room and we had a big paste table. So we laid them all out on there with the fruit and veg and whatever. Went down to change a barrel not long later all the bread rolls were just thrown all over the place. Very scary place that was. Okay, very dark. Very dark. What's over there? Right, we've got to keep our eye out now, Sharon, for that um, memorial, which is down here somewhere. Right, we're pulling over, folks, to see this memorial which I didn't know was here where are we a bit further up oh have we gone past it no it's oh, got see, be... here it is let's pull over here yeah folks can you see this look there's a cottage there someone lives there is there. a house there is it right let's have a little get out shall I'll get the meter. Come on in. Right, we're getting out, folks. I'm going to turn this meter on. Just let it settle down. Just have a little look here. This is a memorial here for the First World War and also the Second World War. Which I didn't know was here, Sharon. It's 106 Squadron there, isn't it? 106 Squadron. There we go. Yeah, I'm not liking the, the surrounding area, folks. Let's just point you over here. Come over here because... Uh, Honestly, you can't see anything. We've got no infrared camera here. And it's actually pitch black over there. And we can't see an absolute thing. But as soon as your eyes get accustomed to it, you can see something. Just having a little look around. I can't see anything on the horizon. But uh, I'm getting nothing here, folks. So Sharon's over by the car. Ready to jump in. Ready to jump in. <laughs> yeah. There is a bench here. I don't know whether you get people sitting on the bench. But there doesn't appear to be anyone here. One time when me mum and dad, there was nobody in the middle flat at this time. It's just me nan in the top flat. The middle tenants had uh, gone. So we lived in the bottom flat and uh, it was one time when my mum and dad wanted to go out to the cinema one evening, I don't know what day it was, I couldn't tell you what day it was. Again, we was about seven, I was about seven or eight, my sister was about 12 or 13 and my, my younger brother was one year younger than me. So Nan was gonna babysit, so we all went up to the top into her living room, sat down in her living room and these, it had the, the, the doors had the, the locks on them with the big, like, 
keys that you turn to lock, lock in, and the key was always in the back of the living room door. No one ever touched it. Anyway, mum and dad, we went into the room, sat down, started watching the telly. I can't remember what was on the telly. And all three of us was in there with me nan. And mum and dad said, okay, we'll see you later on, about half past 10 or whatever. And of course they left, they, they left and shut the door and then carried on down the three, uh, two flights of stairs and out they went. And it must have been about, I don't know, hour and a half later, I suppose, something like that. I said to me nan, I want to go to the toilet. So I just got up and walked to the door, went to open the door, pulled the handle, couldn't get out. I said, then the door's not moving. She says, oh, give us a look here. And she tried opening it. She couldn't open it. The handle would turn, but it, it was like the door was locked from the outside. So looked through the keyhole, couldn't see the key. And I remember looking for the bar that goes across because there was like quite big gaps in the, the edge of the door. And the door bar wasn't there. It wasn't locked. So it obviously wasn't locked. But we looked under the door as well. And I hope thought the key might have dropped out and gone onto the floor. Anyway, cut a long story short. I said to Nan, I really, like, really, really want to go to the toilet. And she said, you'll have to go in one of the flower pots on, on like the vases or whatever on the fireplace. So I did that. Then we went back to carry on watching telly. And um, anyway, we were so engrossed in the telly. Next thing we know, whatever time it was, about an hour later, door opens, mum and dad comes in. We looked around and we said, how did you open that? It was locked. We couldn't get, we couldn't get out. We'd been trying to do it. For, we was trying to do it for quite a long time. And uh, I said, well, we just opened the door, walked in. So we, we was locked in, in that house sort of thing. Unbelievable. But it has been, uh, we have been back there. We went back there in one of our videos um, a few months back. And funny enough, we bumped into a chap that was in the um, top flat where my nan used to live. Oh, that was another thing as well. They come up the, uh, on the top landing where my nan used to live, go up to the second, like the top landing. And one day they went up there and there was no one up there, obviously and a big dresser on the side of the top landing was pulled straight across the top of the stairs. So there was no one up there at that time. And at one stage, this was another one as well. Listen to this one. I don't know what I just noticed there. That camera's just moved. My, 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 myself in the camera's just moved. I don't know what that was about. I don't know if you saw that, folks. Anyway, here's another one for you. In the middle flat, there used to be a lorry driver in his wife and uh, every time he'd get up in the morning, because he was up early, he would bring her in a cup of tea on uh, like a saucer and a china cup sort of thing, and like put it on the side dresser table because she was like laying in bed still or asleep or whatever, and he'd just give her a shout and then he'd go off to work. Anyway, one day he'd done that, and when he came home in the evening, his wife said to him, Here, what did you do that for? He said, What? He said, with the cup and the saucer this morning, what did you do that for? She said, what do you mean? She said, well, you left me a cup of tea, you said, I heard you say it, she said, but I didn't get up and drink it straight away, like I normally don't. She said, when I got up, it was at the bottom end of the bed, balancing on the edge of the bed, on, on the end of the, like, on, on the, the, the duvet or the sheet or, or cover, whatever it was. He said, I put it on the table. So that was just, again, that middle flat again. But I don't know what it was. When I remember as a kid, I used to go up the first staircase and that middle landing, and everyone said it, ice cold. And I remember as a kid going up to the first landing and sometimes shutting my eyes and just running along that landing to get to the last set of landing to go up to see me nan. Uh, very spooky house, but as I say, apparently uh, it's been gutted out over, I'm going back as I say, back 1974 I think we left there. We went there last year and, and the chap I said, has anything ever happened there? And he said no. So whether or not it's happened or what, or it's disappeared now, I don't know, maybe. So things do move on, don't they? Oh my God. Oh, what's that? Your car fan. That's the car fan, that way, yeah. <laughs> you all right, baby? I want to go home. Yeah, I know, well, we've got to give it a bit of a chance, no, yeah? I've given it a chance. I'm not happy. No. The old shadow just fripped me. Did it? <laughs> so there you go, that's Ferrari from Everingham, which I gather used to stand here, Sharon. Oh. So what do you think of that so far? I want to go home, people. They're all saying, take her home, Martin. Yeah, probably are. Yeah, I don't like it. Let's get back in the car. We'll drive down there one more time, folks. I'm just going to try and have a look up the road again. I can't see anything, but there is actually someone's house there. Just behind here, there, there's a cottage there. 
All right, well, let's put this back in. There you go, baby. There you go, you got that? Mm. So let's put that down in there. And we'll go down there one more time. Yeah, pitch black down here. If we turn the lights off now, there's absolutely pitch black. All you've got is moonlight, people. Mever in a airfield. Back and you see her. Yeah, well, the there camera. We go. Oh, God, Lord. Yeah, the trouble is, we can't see much. It's the, if it was a night vision camera, it'd be a lot better, but it's not a night vision camera. My GoPro is uh, broken due to filming the other day in the previous clips, but at least we've given it a go, Sharon. Yeah. Well, out of our comfort zone, as I've said before. Very high up out of my comfort zone. Yeah. There we go, just round here. Right, we're just going to spin around. One other story I've got for you is in my previous house in Roehampton, with, uh, where I used to live with my mum and dad. It's just done it again. Is it movement? Is it my hand movement that's caused that? Let's go over here. It's just done it again. Sorry, folks, I'm just trying to... I hope you saw that, the camera sort of moved. There's, there's no one touching the camera. The camera's actually still, but I'm just seeing if there's some sort of movement recognition or whatever, which I can't seem to... Let me move over that way a bit. Maybe it does that. Let me come over here a bit more. No, I can't work that out. Anyway. We'll leave that one for now, but um, when I lived in the house in Roehampton, with my mum and dad's house, we was getting ready one year to go out Christmas Eve, and we had the three bedrooms on the top landing uh, with a bathroom, and we was all going out to the pub, and I was in the bathroom and what my mum had around the balcony, around the, the top landing, we always used to go into my mum's bedroom because she had a floor to ceiling length wardrobe mirror, mirror. So obviously we used to look in there, dress, then go downstairs or whatever. So anyway, I'll come out of the bathroom after I'd sort of brushed my hair or whatever I'd done, I don't know what I'd done, and walk around the landing. And as I got to, just to, it's just done it again. It's just done it again. You see what I mean when I play this back? I'm going to carry on telling the story. I walk around the landing, and as I walk around the landing, my mum's bedroom door, which was the light was on, and the door was open, the door swung shut, and the light went off. And I, for, my first reaction was, oh, my mum's in there getting dressed. So I stood there, which seemed like an eternity, and in the end, there was no sound. And I called out to my mum, and no reply, no reply. And then I shouted down the staircase, is everyone downstairs? They all said yes. With that, I've walked around the landing to the door, I've pushed the door open, and to push the door open, it wasn't a door that just opened, it was rubbing on the carpet, so it couldn't blow shut sort of thing. So I've, I've opened the door, I've turned the light switch on, and sure enough, there was nobody in there. And I thought to myself, I saw that door, as I'm walking around the landing, I saw the door swing shut, and I saw the light go off in the room. And all that night, we, we went out that night, but I couldn't stop thinking about what I'd just seen, knowing that that carpet dragged on the door, and you had to pull the door. It didn't just blow shut, you had to pull the door, push the door open sort of thing. And for the life of me, I took the light switch off the wall, I moved the light switch and tried to hold it in the middle position and that, and I couldn't do that, it didn't do that, I couldn't think why, took the light switch off, and there was no reason for that. And I don't think we ever experienced anything else in the house, but that, that happened to me on a Christmas Eve, um, I can't even think of the year. It was early 80s, probably 1980, something like that, I would have thought. So, yeah, that was the other thing as well. And one other thing I remember as a kid, in Brixton again, my mum used to go to the hairdressers once a week, and I used to, like, tow along behind the sort of thing. 
and I was always sort of walking along. We used to come to this big old church door, and I remember always flapping the letterbox, flap, 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 not looking, just flapping, 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 and then walking, walking on sort of thing. And I'd done that for, oh, must be weeks and weeks. I used to go every week, Saturday morning, flap, 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 and that was it. And one morning, as I'm walking, we're walking down there, I thought, I'll do it again, and I'll flap, 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 and I thought, this time, I'll look through the letterbox. Anyway, I looked through the letterbox, and all I remember seeing is this big, like, vestibule area with a big staircase there, but standing in the middle, hunched over, was this grey man, it was a grey, old ring, old hair, straggly hair, he had white robes on, and a grey complexion, and as I'm looking through the letterbox, he turned round at me, and he had a sort of glow around him, he turned around at me and started coming towards me. Of course, I blinked, I, won't, I put myself, so I let the letterbox go, woof, off. And that, I don't know what that was. That must have been some sort of a spectre or something. There was no reason for that to be there, that thing. And as I say, the man was grey. I remember that, hunched over, and he just turned around, looked at me, and started to move towards me. And I was doing that, as I say, for weeks and weeks before then. Those are just a few of the things that have um, occurred to me. So I hope you've enjoyed them, folks. Right, we're giving it one more go, folks. So all you people that aren't subscribed, can you subscribe now for what I'm going through, please? <laughs> just coming out the other end folks just we've done the whole length of the uh, old Meverenham airfield road and uh, we'll make our way back now to where we started so I thought it was along this road a bit further back So this is on the way back to uh, Martin, more uh, Martin now, and then obviously back home for us. Well, there you go, folks. That was our little Halloween escapade you could say we won't say which we would normally do Sharon is it and it's like I won't do it again yeah probably won't do that again but anyway time to find out who's won this Kasori Turbo Blaze uh, 6 litre air fryer so hopefully you would have answered the question which was who was the, the mother in the film The Adams Family and who was the name of the woman Morticia Morticia was what we was looking for Morticia folks Morticia Adams and we're going to be looking in the comment section for the person who puts down Morticia Adams, okay? So we've been down the comment section and we've seen that the winner, which we're going to choose because today is the 31st, we're going to choose the 31st person. Yeah. And once we've chosen that person, the after going through... Come along there. Yep, yeah, the name will come along... No, it can't come along there. I can't put it along there. Okay. I've got to put it in the comment section. I put it in the comments. Because that video here isn't live, Sharon. It was filmed oh, yesterday. Silly me. So silly late night. We're sitting here now at the computer and we've put the name of the winner at the top, pinned mm -hmm. to the top of the comment section. So well done, whoever you are. Mm -hmm. All I'll say is, 
Send us an email on that email address, Sharon. Right on that one. Oh, no, there, baby, yeah, underneath. There, there. And uh, send us an email for your name and address where we can send it to, and we'll put this in the post to you ASAP. And it will well, be ASAP. There you go. I hope you've enjoyed this, folks. It's something a little bit different. We don't normally do this, but um, I hope you've enjoyed it. All the stories you did find uh, here in this video are true stories. And the issue with the camera. The camera's now been sent away and I've had to exchange it. I'm waiting for a new one to come back as a direct replacement. The microphones, what happened with Tracy, uh, they seem to be working fine. There's no power problem with them at all. I've used them uh, since then. And also the little orbs that was around Lee Van Camp. I don't know if you saw them. A couple going through and around. There weren't moths coming out of his wallet. And, that, no. <laughs> and it definitely wasn't dust, Only folks. jokingly. Cause, and also the camera moving... That glitching, what it done with in, with me, it's never done. Well, it done it once before when I was filming outside. I'm talking about a good three years ago. Well, folks, I'm going to love and leave you because I'm backers and I need my bed. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this. We'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye, bye for now.